Good morning to you. Thank you so much for staying on the AM show. I'm Bernice Abubedulansa. This morning, uh, the National Service Secretariat is rolling out an initiative to train personnel under the teaching module. Why has it decided to do this and what problem is there to solve? I've been joined by Osei Esibe Entry, Executive Director of uh, the NSS and Mr. Loring Sapong, who is also uh, a top official there. We'll be talking briefly about that. Uh, but let me come to you, Mr. ACB Entry, who is Executive Director of the NSS. Once we have you here, you know with what's happening uh, with your Ashanti Region NSS Director, we definitely need to touch on that before we zoom into the reason you're here proper. Uh, what exactly is the secretary doing about this? There have been calls for his dismissal. Uh, just tell us if that has come to your notice and what you're doing about it. Well, thank you for the opportunity. In fact, yesterday we heard all what happened. It was rather unfortunate to hear such words coming out from the director of the National Service Scheme. Um, but later we heard that he has apologized and we have also had opportunity of reading the apology from our director for Ashanti region. But yesterday, immediately, the news started flashing across the media, land speak. What we did immediately was to invite him. So yesterday, I invited him to proceed to headquarters where he came immediately for us to also listen to his side of the story. So even though he has apologized to the nurse, and we are not just allowing the apology to be enough. So. Mm -hmm. He is going to appear before a committee of inquiry, which is going to be announced today. So he's definitely going to meet that committee of inquiry for us to know exactly what prompted him to do that. And after that, we will come out, we will take an appropriate action. And, and so while this is happening, will he still be at post or he's asked to uh, step aside while you do these? Well, like inquiries? I said, in fact, uh, he's, he's, he's been meeting management this morning. Okay. Yeah, because you cannot just come out with... Uh, committee of inquiry whilst you've not listened to him. Yesterday he proceeded, he came, but he came at a time that was outside the working hours. And as such, we've arranged that we are meeting him immediately after the interview. We are meeting him to listen to his side of the story so as to be able to even have a good terms of reference for the committee that will be meeting to interrogate him further. Right. So we can move on to why, why you are here. So the, the, the scheme is rolling out an initiative to train teachers. Why, why is it important and what problem are you hoping to solve? Well, you see, for national service is going to be 15 next year. And it tells you that for 49 good years, national service has been supported, supported Ministry of Education and to be specific, GES, Ghana Education Service, we normally rolled out and deploy a lot of sizable number to go and eat teaching and learning. Mm. So for the 49 years, they, we've been sending them there to go and support teaching and learning without having gone through pedagogic training, okay. which we all know that is very essential. So the reason why National Service is apt to do this task is to make sure that at least we work in conjunction with the NTC that is the National Teaching Council, to be able to orient them. We all know that at least they have graduated, so meaning they have finished their tertiary education, but there's one thing acquiring the knowledge, and there's another thing having to know the methods in teaching. So we are just teaming up with them, collaborating with them, to be able to prepare them adequately so that they can go out there and give their best. So all what we want to do is to enable NTC to mm. be able to help us to prepare them before they go to the classroom. But that is not to say that all the numbers that we post out there haven't gotten the education, no. For instance, this year we are pushing out about 51,000 to support teaching and learning. Right. But out of that huge number, about 36,000 have gone through education. They have studied a lot about pedagogy. So with them, we don't have any problem at all because they know the methods of teaching. teaching yeah. They know the methods of teaching. But what about those that we are pushing to senior high school? Mm. That is those who have special skill, like the sciences. Mm. Uh, those who graduated from KNUSD, having gone to study biology, having gone to study engineering, having gone to study architecture and all the others. So if you are also posting them to go and support teaching and learning at the senior high school, what do you do to them? 
So these are the areas where we are bringing right. in, in the regulators. What, which is the National in. Teaching Council. National teaching and Council. thankfully, we have the Deputy Registrar here with us, Mr. Lawrence Sapple. So just tell us briefly what processes you're going to take these uh, trainees through. Yeah, um, NTC, National Teaching Council, we are mandated to professionalize teaching in the country. So just as we may not want to see unqualified personnel in medical field, in the legal field, we are also guiding against the intrusion of non-trained teachers mm. into the teaching profession. And over the years, National Service has been supplying personnel to the education sector. Per our law, before one becomes a teacher, you have to go through the training. Right. So these personnel who are going to be deployed to schools, they are not going to take the position of teachers. They are going to provide support wow. to teachers to do their work. Okay. And we feel that for them to provide the support needed, they must be given the, uh, the needed competences that will help them to do their work well. So we are providing them with pedagogy training mm. that will help them to assist the teachers to carry out their day-to-day -day uh, And so, I mean, um, let me come to you, Mr. Isibe. These, for this batch of students starting the national service, they've already been posted, right? So is this training for, for them or for those who are likely to be posted next year? Just help us understand. No, it's those, these numbers that have been just been posted. Mm. And how long will the training be? The training is not going to, if I be, are going to intersperse it. Okay. The first one is going to be about two weeks. So with the two weeks, that is going to be an orientation. We will orient them into the pedagogic trade, the background, for them to really understand it better. But whilst they, then they will be doing some distance program along the line. Okay. Because we want to sharpen them. We want to let them know. It's, it's, it's really involving. Mm. And we cannot just push them to one side to train them before we bring them. Because we need their presence. Their presence so, needs to be felt. Right. So this will happen in the various regions. How, how exactly is it going to happen, Mr. Mm. Mr. Sapon? So for the first two weeks, we are deploying them to the universities that train teachers to give them proper orientation. After that, too, is they will go to their stations, and that is where we we'll engage them through online mode with these same facilitators. Mm -hmm. And who is going to take up the cost for the for while for the training while they are in these universities? They're going to be posted to accommodation, food, and all that. Is that also the responsibility of the NSS? Well, the NSS has a responsibility to pay. NSS will be paying the allowances, but at least it's going to be a shared responsibility between us, the NTC, and that of the Ministry of Education. Okay. We are still looking for partners from outside to come and support us. Great. Yes. Mm. So, Mr. Sapon, will they receive certificates after this? What is the future for a person who serves as a teacher under the National uh, Service Scheme and receives training for, from the NTC? What next can they do? Yeah, they are not teachers mm. and uh, what we are giving them is orientation not training as we do for teachers the law says that before one is allowed to go to classroom that person must be given authorization okay. in the form of provisional certification okay. so we give them a permit that will allow them to go to the classroom and uh, the permit expires after one year so after one year if they want to take this as a profession, then they'll have to go through the due process to professionalize themselves as teachers. Mm. So there's something happening at the Nut Hall today. Can you just share more details with us? Well, what is happening at the Nut Hall today is the launching of the program. Because uh, I'm expecting the Minister of Education to be there. I'm expecting the Chief of Staff of the Republic of Ghana to be there. Then the NTC and NSS, we are also going to be there with mm. some of the invited personalities. They've, all what is going to happen there is to open out for the public to know that this, this time there's going to be a change and the change is that we want to orient them, we want to get the best out of them. That is why we are trying to let the public know so that by extension where they are going to be posted we also know that even if the national service that have been posted to your institution is asking for two weeks, it's, it's for the betterment of all. So you have to allow that person to go and get the orientation before the person come back to fill the gap. Right. And so, Mr. Sapong, you, you mentioned that these personnel are not going to be engaged in real teaching, um, but we know what it is like in some parts of the country. They may end up teaching, uh, but, but that's not the point I want to make here. Uh, 
what exactly are they be, are they going to be doing? You said they will be assisting the teachers, but in practical terms, what exactly will they be doing? The teachers are in the classroom teaching. They will give exercises. Mm -hmm. There may be some instance where the teachers have to go for meetings. The class can never be empty. So in that case, the teacher, uh, the teacher will give assignment or exercise to the learners. Mm. The service personnel will ensure that the learners uh, do what is expected of them. Okay. And then collate all their books and keep them for the teacher. Mm. So, so, so what kind of training are you going to give them then? Um, what exactly are you going to take them through? Yeah, um, in teaching, the knowledge about the learner is very, very critical. Right. They need to understand the characteristics of the learners that they are going to interact with. The knowledge of the school environment, even the community where they are going to work, they need to have orientation about that so that they can um, easily mingle with the people in the community. So we want to give them that orientation so they will not be strangers in the environment where they are going to work. And um, when the learners are also doing something that goes against their beliefs, they will understand the individual differences that exist within the school environment. That's fantastic. So final words to you, uh, Executive Director of the NSS, as we launch this program later today, uh, what is the aspiration, what is the hope of this initiative? Well, first of all, I'm sure it's going to help the National Service personnel. It's going to actually make them to be astute. It's going to prepare them very well. Because uh, if you know what you are going to have, a lot of knowledge about what you are going to do, it actually positions you well. And then it's also going to introduce them into what pedagogy is all about. I'm sure by the time that a lot of them are finished with this year national service, some may even be wanting to become professional teachers. And those who want to become professional teachers, the gateway will be there for them. And who knows that once they are being introduced into pedagogy, a lot of them can even take up to the distance program that is being run by Winneba and others mm. to become professionals in, in the future. Mm. There is not only this area where national service is going, but the national service is doing a lot of orientation, especially even those that are going into the area of tourism. The national service is having a program being run with tourism, that, and we are doing it with the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, Arts and Culture. Those ones are also going to be oriented. And apart from that, we also have another model in the area of housing. Because I'm sure we, ha we haven't visited our office. You have to find time and come and visit our office and you will see the work that has been done by the National Service personnel. The office units that these themselves have built. So that unit are also going to be oriented. All those that are going, especially the new models that we have rather introduced and the old ones that we are reinvigorating, mm -hmm. all of them are going to be given a lot of orientation to actually bring the best out of them. We are now in the fourth industrial revolutionary world where ICT is key. So even though they've acquired knowledge, they need to acquire skill. So when they acquire the additional skill, that is going to make them employable when they are done with their national service. So this is the area where we are going. Right. Thank you so much for Thank joining us also. this morning. Osei Sibir Entry is Executive Director of the NSS, and we've also been speaking to uh, Lauren Sapong, who is Deputy Registrar at the National Teaching Council. And we've been talking about an initiative to train national service personnel under the teaching module so that you don't have strangers in the classroom and you always know that they are being professional in whatever they do. Well, quickly, we'll take a quick breather. When we come back, we'll be telling you all you need to know about benchmark values to stay.